Hey guys, what's up? My name is Sumit and I'm back with another Blender tutorial. And this time, I will be showing you guys how to create a beautiful bathroom sink model in Blender. And uh, I'm using Blender 2.79a for this project. So without any much further ado, let's get started. So with the new Blender scene, let's get started. Uh, first things first, the screencast keys are checked. And now let me get rid of all the default objects in Blender. And uh, let me create the wall first. So for the wall, I'll be adding a plane, rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degree. And then I'll go to the front orthographic view by hitting the pad 5 and then the pad 1. And then go to the edit mode, hit G to uh, activate the movement uh, or movement transformation. And then hit Z to set the movement onto the Z uh, Z axis only. Press and pad one, and then hit Enter, and then go back to object mode by hitting Tab. Now the reason I've done this is uh, when if I'm now scaling it up, you can, as you can see that if I'm now scaling it up or down, the point of origin is always uh, remaining fixed to that of my grid or the 3D grid. So it's very helpful. It's very handy. I often do it myself. It's your choice. You can do it or not. But uh, I, according to me, it's uh, it's more suitable thing to do any kind of 3D work. Now it's time to scale it up on the x-axis a little bit, somewhere like this, and then scale it on the z-axis until I reach a desired or a satisfactory result. Now that's the wall where I will be placing my entire mesh. Now it's time to add the wooden panel on which uh, the sink will be fit or fitted. So for that, I'll be adding a cube, scale it down on the z-axis until I get my desired result. Uh, I think that much is sufficient and now scale it up on the x-axis. Uh, just right about there so then uh, there will be a little bit of a space on both of this area let me bring that up uh, right up there and bring it forward uh, right about there yeah so that's my wooden panel and uh, in the image as you've seen that the wooden panel has got a uh, little bit of a smoothness or wavy flow so in order to get that wavy textured flow what i'll be doing is to i have to now work on this little devil here so let me hide this one at first and let me work on this so when to the edit mode at first i'll be introducing a loop cut the purpose of this loop cut is uh, is to add a mirror modifier on to this mesh and do the editing on one part so automatically the uh, editing will be updated on the other part as well so I don't have to work twice so by hitting Z I'll go to the wireframe mode hit A to deselect everything then press B to turn on the box selection just to drag this area and then hit delete and then select vertices to select the one half of my mesh so it's actually the half of the mesh is now selected now it's time to add a mirror modifier over here so where are you yeah this one activate clipping mode and then activate the modifier in the edit mode so now i can see everything which what i'm doing right on the both side now uh, i'll be adding another loop cut over here so that uh, a little bit of a wavy texture is formed and now what I'll be doing is I'll go to the edge selection, select this little devil here and then bring it backward a little bit right about there and bring, and select this one the center piece or the center edge and then bring it forward right about there. So there is a zigzag flow as you can see but it's still not smooth so what I will be doing is select this entire edge loop by pressing alt and then right click on this area so as you can see that the, the entire edge loop is selected that's the shortcut key 
hit control B to activate my bevel mode and then just hover my mouse uh, forward a little bit and you can see that I am actually getting my desired result now in order to get that smooth wavy flow or edge flow I'll just scroll my I'll just scroll my mouse wheel up so introducing more and more loop cuts and getting more more and more wavy flow around the mesh uh, somewhere like this I am now satisfied with my result and the same thing will be done over here as well but uh, the may one problem uh, what I will uh, what everyone will be facing is by selecting this entire edge loop if I am activating the bevel mode as you can see that nothing is happening this is because of the fact that the mirror modifier is actually activated and if I am just uh, turning the visibility off of this mirror modifier you can see that there is no physical mesh over here so I have to make this entire thing as a physical mesh so I'll have to activate or apply this mirror modifier over here but it cannot be done in edit mode so I'll have to go back to the object mode and then apply this mirror modifier and now you can see that it's uh, a full mesh so now it's time to add that bevel mode what uh, which I was talking about and then just uh, scrolling my mouse wheel up until I get to the desired result and voila I have got what I wanted so that's the technique of uh, creating any kind of any kind of round edge or any kind of uh, wavy or flow edge flows with the bevel you don't have to use a bevel modifier you can do it in the uh, sorry edit mode as well by yourself now I'll be selecting this entire loop sorry this entire edge flow as well as this one as well as this two and this one as well because no physical object is 100% pointy and now it's actually my mesh is actually turning out to be 100% pointy which is incorrect so selecting all these things again I'll be hitting Control B to activate my bevel mode and then just hover my mouse up a little bit and leave it right there now you can see that it's actually looking rather nice and another loop cut is needed right about there on the back because what I'll be adding after this is a sub sub modifier you know on a level 2 so I don't want my mesh to get deformed totally so control 2 to activate the sub sub modifier level 2 and you can see that a smooth shading gives uh, my mesh a better a better finish a better touch so let me unhide the wall by uh, by clicking alt h by pressing alt h sorry and now you can see that my mesh is actually actually getting a formation now let me just uh, rename this thing as wall because it's very good habit to rename each and every each and every object that you create because it helps you very much when you are actually working on any kind of 3d project uh, if you're especially if your scene is very large so it's a good habit to rename everyone everything as you can recognize them very easily so now let me just uh, let me save this one quickly go to the desktop and save this as tutorial dot blend save as blender file now my work's been finished now it's time to add the sync model now for the sync model I'll be again using uh, a cube because this one is very very important guys because uh, you may be wondering why what are, why on earth am I actually using cube instead of I, can, I could easily use any kind of circle and then extrude that as I used to do it before but working on the turbo squid I've learned a lot of lessons and I've seen that having a good topology is always a is always a good feature and that definitely helps you to sell your product now although I don't have much of a sales record but uh, I found out that my blender models are actually 
quite expensive and people also buy it uh, in $29 or $35 like that and uh, they recommend using that expensive model because of the only one fact that they are checkmate certified a checkmate certification is uh, takes a very uh, a lot of labor and work to do to achieve but one of the most important thing that checkmate teaches you is to have a good edge flow or a good uh, topology around your mesh which is very very important whenever one of your client is actually purchasing your product they will be hoping to get the desired result or without any work they want to just they will go ahead and just render it and they want to achieve an awesome result but if your model does not have a good topology then your model won't won't stand on the chance so having a good topology is is a must thing to for any kind of CG, CG artist so I always recommend using the cube because it always have a good topology around it no matter how much sub sub modifier you are using so now I will be adding a level 2 sub sub modifier on this cube by hitting control 2 and you can see that it's actually getting a sphere loop and there is also a very good edge flow there is no actually pointness on anywhere everywhere on this mesh you can find quads that means the four side or squares everywhere there's no tries or paw or anything or ingons there are no score for any kind of ingons now i'll go to the edge mode uh, sorry edit mode and select this top face and delete it delete the face because i want it to look like a sink and not a football or anything now again i'll go to the edit mode insert a loop selection uh, insert a loop cut over here and just bring it down select this one as well sorry select this edge flow as well what am i doing this edge flow sorry and this one as well and scale it down right about there yeah inserting another loop cut i will just scale it up a little bit and then select this one bring it down and then scale it up uh, right above it yeah uh, let me just tweak it a little bit more now that uh, now we have got a good v-shaped funnel or funnel shaped mesh now let me scale it down and uh, just see if it's uh, if this one is actually fitting my model uh, actually it is it needs to be scaled up a little bit right about there and a little bit more okay so now that now it's done and now it's time to scale it on the x as well as y axis a little bit and it's done let me see yeah okay so that's my sink guys and uh, now what I'll be adding is applying this sub sub modifier and now you can see that it has a, it has got a good topology around it now it's time to introduce a solidify modifier to it because sinks are actually solid they have some sort of a thickness and add another subsurf modifier go to phase 2 or level 2 and select smooth shading for it and now if i'm going to the edit mode you can see that i've got a good topology all around my mesh and that's a secret uh, you guys you can easily achieve anything out of a cube now that's the sink so let me quickly rename it as sink and it's now time to create the faucet and for the faucet also i will again go to the uh, I'll again select a plane rotate it on x-axis to be about 90 degree scale it down until i until i think it's uh, fitting the scene bring it up right about there a bit, bring it a little bit backward yeah 
and then apply level 2 of subsurf modifier now it has got uh, it's actually round in shape and uh, apply that and now it's only extrusion and scale and nothing else a little bit of extrude and then again extrude hit S to scale a little bit of a scaling and then again hit E to extrude then again E to extrude S to scale scale it down a little bit scale it down and then again hitting E to extrude now this time after this extruding thing what I'll be doing is uh, by selecting these front faces all these faces I'll just go ahead and click anywhere over here by hitting by pressing control and then left clicking anywhere and automatically it will extrude to that particular area now let me just rotate it a little bit and uh, let me just select this one a little bring it up a little bit rotate it maybe a little bit and oops let me just that's what selected this one okay and e to extrude g to move it and then r to extrude r to rotate and now that we have got a nice tap like shape over here faucet like shape and i'll be deleting these front faces so we need a hollow structure over there now again I'll be introducing a solidify modifier a little bit of a solidification is always needed and then level 2 of subsurf modifier and select smooth shading and now a little bit of a tweaking is needed right about there and another look to be introduced right about there and I have got what I needed and another one is also needed over there so that we don't lose any we don't uh, get any kind of deformity excuse me about that noise okay so the faucet has been created and now it's time to rename the faucet faucet and uh, the similar thing will be done on both side of it uh, because we need the handle to run the faucet so the same thing I, I will just duplicate it and send it right bar there and this time what I'll be doing is I don't want to work it all over again so I'll just select this face hit control plus to select uh, the edges that I wanted and then hit delete to delete all these edges now that we have created uh, this one let me just uh, scale it sorry let me just extrude and scale it down and then hit alt m to merge it to the center and it's not looking too good because of the fact that i need a bevel modifier a little bit did i do anything any anything wrong over here let me see Yes, I did something wrong. Horrendous things, actually. Uh, let me just turn this visibility off. And let me see what I what wrong has been done. Okay, so this one. S select this one all by. okay so this is the problem so what I'll be doing just sh hit shift H to unhide uh, hide everything but this uh, little devil over here and now go to the edit mode and go to the wireframe selection Select with the box selection I'll just quickly select all these vertices and hit delete to delete all these vertices and now let me see yes I've got the desired result so these are the small things that can 
easily occur and there's nothing to be afraid of there's nothing to be confused this can happen to every one of us this always happens this kind of confusion and let me just rename this as the handle and uh, a little bit of a tweaking is needed over here as well so let me just uh, what i'll be doing oh i did something wrong let me just delete these vertices scale it uh scale uh, extrude it and then scale it down a little bit and then again hit e to extrude just extrude it a little bit and then again hit e to extrude extrude it right about there and then hit e to extrude again is to scale e to extrude move it d to extrude is to scale again hit e to extrude on m to merge it on the center so that's something of a handle that will look like anyway and um, i don't want to work it all over again so what i'll be doing is uh, i'll be pressing shift s and select the curse uh, sel sorry select uh, control alt shift and c so set the origin to the 3d cursor and that's the thing guys just apply the location and scale sorry about that and now i'll use the meter modifier and we have got the meter modifier applied and the handles are looking rather nice so that's the thing and i think the wall should be should be much more higher because i will be applying a meter over there and it's now time to it's now time to introduce the mirror uh, okay so let me just save it now for the mirror i'll go to add a, pl a plane yeah plane of course rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degree again bring it up right about there and the mirror will also not be square it will be rectangular in shape so s to scale hit the scaling proportionate to x-axis only and uh, a little bit of uh, scaling on the x-axis is always needed and then going to the edit mode i'll hit e to extrudes s to scale right about there and then bring it up a little bit and just scale it yeah then again hit e to extrude s to scale and then bring it down a little bit right about there and that's and that's the that's the mirror yeah that's the mirror i've created okay so now I'll be selecting all this uh, edge flow. Sorry about that. This one, this one, this one as well. And I'll be just dragging it back a little bit. So that my mirror has been created as well as my wall. So let me just rename it as mirror set and uh, the point of origin will also for the mirror will also be the wall as well uh, sorry the 3d cursor as well so i'll just uh, set the origin to the 3d cursor by uh, by pressing ctrl alt shift c select origin to the 3d cursor and now everything is aligned to that of the 3d cursor yeah uh okay so it's now done and now it's time to apply the texture 
Now for the textures and materials of every object, I'll be doing it one by one. So the first thing, first it would be the wall. So let me hide everything other than the wall by hitting Shift H, and let me add a quick material to the wall over here. So going to the node editor by pressing Shift F3, and click on the new material, and let me just rename this one as wall as well. And now it will be a brick pattern, so the texture will be a brick texture. And there will be a slight variation in the color because now if you can see, it's actually getting a brick color. Let me just go to the wall settings, use notes. And another important feature over here, guys, if you are seriously enough, you want to render something if you want to sell your models on turbo squid and if you want uh, your model to be checkmate certified uh, the requirements for checkmate certification uh, for the displayed image is actually having a background of rgb 247 now the shortcut key to uh, to have a 247 rgb background is just having 0.93 percent of each red green and blue value 0.93 is enough and there you go you have your rgb247 background now you can see that uh, it's actually getting a, a brick texture but it's actually looking artificial and i don't want this kind of artificiality in here so i'll be scaling it up a little bit uh, sorry down a little bit maybe 3.2 is good uh, maybe yeah like this three will be three will be sufficient for this scene and now the it's now time to change the color the first color will be a little bit of a yellow like that the second one will be something like this and here we go that's that's the big pattern now it's still looking artificial so I'll duplicate this quickly and uh, use a mix shader that's uh, this a uh, very old stuff but I find it quite quite useful to use this this node setup rather than that of using principal DSDF it's my personal touch you can have you you can have uh, a different opinion about it but to me i i like this kind of node setup much more and now it's the it's to change the color the color will be uh, brown as well for the shining or for the for the gloss glossy bsdf so and let me just bring the value down like that and uh, yeah that's it and now it's time to use a bump node to create to create that kind of a bumpness for the, uh, for the normal of this uh, texture use the color channel and plugging it to the height value and then plugging the normal value to both of the normal value to both the you know the diffuse as well as the glossy bsdf now you can see that uh, I'm getting a better result than it was before but still it's looking creepy so it's now time to add let me just add a little bit of a a little bit of a color ramp over here because I want a different kind of a color channel to be going all over this primary color so this one sorry the first color won't be black so i want this color to be somewhere like uh, like this maybe a little bit of a tint tinted yellow and then the, over here i'll be adding a little bit of a red channel turn the value down and for this one i'll be using red value yeah something like that 
and for the factor i'll be using uh, i'll be using yeah that's enough that's quite likability of this of this more setup now another thing i'll be using is uh, is there will be a mixture of this of this uh, brick texture as well as noise texture so I'll be using another texture which will be a noise texture because I wanted a bumpness because uh, according to the picture that I've shown you that there is a little bit of a bumpness or rough edge going around here it's looking too solid you can see it if I'm if I will be using a lamp let me just demonstrate this quickly as let me just demonstrate you quickly uh, let me use a point lamp over here and the lamp value let me just increase the lamp value by 500 now that you can see that we have we are getting bumpness all right but it's not looking that much of a realistic so what i'll be doing i'll be just decreasing the strength value to about 0 0.3 sorry 0 0.2 that means 20 percent of the actual strength and increase the distance by 0 0.3 so there will be a tiled like structure and there will be i want uh, this tile way to also be not to be this kind of a smooth surface all over it so i'll be using a noise texture and uh, to mix it with this uh, with the bricks texture i'll be using uh, a mix rgb node yeah and plug the noise texture to the second value and now if you can see that we are getting a little bit of a rough edge now if i am increasing the scale value you can see that i am getting my desired result now i'll be using 300 or better to say 100 let me, let me just put 100 value and we are getting much of a desired result and a little bit of a distortion and for this one the glossiness i'll be go to 100 percent of the glossiness uh point point zero two will be good enough and thus we are getting our desired result let me just increase this one a little even more maybe 300 yeah 300 will be all right because we are getting that kind of a bumpness and for the factor value i'll be decreasing this uh, this one so that there's a less of a bumpness going around and you can see that we are getting our desired result and now if i'm using the strength of this one as a displacement i can also get let me just plug this quickly to the displacement no not this one it's not looking good uh, let me just uh, yeah so this uh, wall has been created uh, i can also let me just scale it up a little bit maybe maybe six is good yeah, six is good so i'll be doing six over here as well and uh, let me just increase the uh, let me just a little bit of a tweaking uh yeah that's it that's the thing and uh, and another thing uh, what will be the factor for this one the diffuse as well as the glossiness is to add an input which will be the geometry and it will be the pointness so that we have got both the diffuse structure as well as the sorry not pointness it shall be yeah it, it will be pointless sorry and 
the glossiness is also going on uh, let me just uh, go for 0 0.01 of the glossy value or maybe the zero of the glossy value is not good let me just, uh, just increase this channel if i want yeah so that's it that's the thing to do Let me just quickly rephrase that. Uh, what I done here was it might get confusing. The first of all, I have used a brick texture for my diffuse BSDF, and the color for or the primary color I have used three different colors. It's according to your own choice. You can select any of any other color if you want, uh, but I want a little yellowish tint for this, so I have. Uh, created three different channels for the yellow tint I can also change or I can tweak the color according to my uh, choice if I want but I'll be rather for the sake of this tutorial I'll be sticking to this and then duplicate this one this brick texture to over here in order to uh, in order to use this the same brick texture as the bumpness for my mesh so to uh, make it look like realistic and in order to uh, use that kind of a bumpness as well as a glossiness I actually fed it with a glossy BSDF which will be channelized by a bump map and the bump map is actually fed by the brick texture as well as the noise texture the noise texture is actually giving a little bit of as you can see the uh, noise is actually going on in here now the more noise I'm giving the more rough it will become and the less I give the less it will become but I'll be sticking to that other 300 because the size of the tiles are actually very small and uh, a little bit of a distortion and the mix value for this two is actually I have decreased this decrease the uh, the factor of this noise texture a little bit to until I getting my desired result and uh, over here the mix shader how these two are interpolated is actually the pointness that means the the edge on which uh, it's actually getting uh, getting the pointness or the edgy structure the it is that the light is actually reflecting on a glossy on a glossy mass so this is the setup i hope uh, you have i hope you have got what i was blabbering about and uh, yeah that's it that's for the wall texture let me just unhide everything and now it's time to use of uh, use our wooden panel as colorful as we want so let me just quickly use this as as my material as I will be applying the material now what I'll be doing over here I I have downloaded uh, a picture from my uh, from one of the website and um, that's actually a wooden plank texture and I'll be texture paint I'll be applying texture paint on this wooden panel and apply this thing as uh, in order to get a synchronized texture pattern all over all over my mesh so for this thing what i'll be doing is at first i have to uh, uv unwrap this mesh so let me just go to the edit mode and then select each and everything and over here let me go to the uv let me go to the uv editor and uh, just hitting U over here and select Smart UV Project and hit OK. Now you can see that the entire UV layout has been created, automatically updated in the UV image editor. So the UV layout has been uh, created. I will just uh, select this text paint option. And the first thing that uh, something is warning me is there is a missing data. It's actually I'm missing a paint slot 
so I'll quickly introduce a pin slot select a diffuse color and rename this one as wooden panel again it's very good habit to rename each and everything and select ok so automatically you see that a palette has been created and the material has turned black now why is actually turning black it's actually because the canvas is empty and by default the canvas is actually black so let me just select this wooden panel panel and you can see that the canvas is actually black with uh, the UV layouts being updated now for down here let me just scroll it down you can see there is an option called texture I'll be selecting new texture because I'm using an image texture to create a material for this one so this texture I'll again rename this as wooden texture wooden panel sorry and then go to the my, go to my texture options here and click on this one and select brush wooden panel you can see that automatically what i renamed over here it's actually updated so this is the option uh, as you can see the canvas is black because it's actually black now it's time to sell, uh, to open the image that i have downloaded go to the desktop let me just uh, select this one here we are and select this image now I can paint it like this drag and drop like this but you can see that the image is actually not looking good and there is a little bit of a, a little bit of a tiling problem which is going around here so paint is not the option I'll be using here so what I'll be op uh, what I'll be actually selecting instead of this brush mapping as tiled I'll be go to this stencil mode and you can see that an, an overlaid image of the texture is actually present that is the stencil mode now clicking on the right click and then just uh, dragging the mouse up here the overlay is actually moved by select by pressing control and then right clicking it's it will actually rotate and by holding shift and then right click it will actually it will be scaling so i will scale it right about there and then i will now draw what i want now you can see there's no tiling problem no problem for any kind of uh, any kind of a mass displacement or anything else there's no problem at all now control 7 to go to the bottom view and again i'll be painting the same thing like i did by left clicking and dragging and automatically you can see that everything is updated here over here one for the front selection and painting again uh, control one to go to the back selection again painting three for the right selection again painting and control Free to go to the left selection and again painting that's every time you are doing is painting and painting nothing else so that my image has been created and that's it that's the texture that I have created but another very important thing is you must have to save this image otherwise you will lose your uh, once you are quitting blender you will lose your image and you have to redo it again so over here there's a little option called image at first select pack as png so this thing has been packed as png and then save as image or f3 to save the image and let me just set this as wooden panel as it is and save as image now the texture has been has been saved now it's time to go back to the object mode now in the object mode you cannot see anything because if i'm going you cannot see anything this is because of the fact that i haven't even applied this image texture on this mesh now you can find this image right here once you drag it down this is the image that has been that i just now created and let me just rename this one as wooden panel as well and just plug this color 
output to the input of the diffuse BSDF and you can see that the image has been created. The one thing that I can surely see that uh, everywhere there is there is a there is very fine or smooth uh, interpolation going on but on the top view as well as on the bottom view there is a little bit of a problem regarding the texture as is the texture has not been implemented properly so I'll again go to the this will happen time after time so I'll again go to the uh, texture mode and by this time I'll again you don't have to worry about anything just click and you get the desired result just draw it and you will get the desired result in the rendered view so you don't have to worry about a single thing so now let me just again go to the object mode and now you can see that a very little problem is now occurring just on the top view and it might also happen and nowhere else just only the top view a little bit of a tweaking is again needed so again with the texture paint just paint this thing now sometimes you cannot do it by anything whatever you do it just turns like that the problem is not in the texture but in my mesh so let me just see what kind of problem is actually there the problem is that uh, let me let me turn on the edit mode and this is the problem there is an extreme smoothness going on on this on this edge loop so if i'm selecting this one and if i'm clicking g twice and just dragging it over here as you can see it's not dragging it's just going over there so I'll be I'll have to introduce another loop cut right about there and now I think my, our problem has been solved now the problem will be solved so again let me go to the texture paint option uh, turn on the rendered view for the ease of our work and just paint again and again right in there and I don't think that there will be any problem occurring this time let me just go to the object mode and you can see the devil is still there <laughs> okay so let me see what can i what can be done actually if i'm actually using this one another look at right about there one thing can be done let me just introduce another look at right right in there and another look at right in there Okay, sorry, there wasn't any problem. Let me just rephrase that. Okay, now let us see if things are turning good or not. This time it will be working like this time it will be working 100%. I'm sure about it. and let me see Wait. yes of course so as you can as you have seen that the problem was in the mesh not in the texture so i don't know it might happen to you as well because it has happened to me a lot of time so let me just uh, quickly tweak this front view as well because there was a little bit of a problem in the texture pattern on the front view and let me see now how is this looking and it's looking great yeah there's no problem at all so now again i have to save this as pack as png and again you have to save this as image because otherwise again this will be adding a problem 
so wooden panel is actually the one that I've been saving and now the material is updated now it's time to add the glossy effect again so mix shader and then glossy shader glossy BSDF a quick quick using of this one turn this thing a little bit down over there let me see how is this looking uh, not looking too bad let me just see this let me just uh, use this two thing and see yeah it's looking rather nice but still a lot of work to be done again duplicate this image texture over here use this as non-color data add the introduce a bumpness to to both the diffuse as well as the glossy glossy bsdf and now that you can see that the bumpness has been created but it's too much so 0.2 again and uh, the distance 0.3 again and it's looking rather nice but another thing to be used is to have a little bit of a fresnel value because everything has fresnel in it so input go to the fresnel value and for the wood the fresnel value is 4.2 i'll be using 4.2 as a fresnel value and you can see that it's actually looking rather nice let me see how is this things looking now the color has been has become too much of of uh, red in color so this time what i'll be doing is instead of using this this image texture i will be also using a mix rgb node because i want to have this color to be to be uh, to be same as that of my scene so i'll be using screen for this one and select the color to be down like this and it's your choice how are you going to interpolate these things until you get the better result you can do let me just mix it yeah that will be a mixture not that one just a little bit of tweaking until this until it's actually matching my scene right about there I suppose yeah that's the wooden panel okay so the wooden panel has been created now uh, I will quickly duplicate this one and bring it down to match the flow and now you can see that the wooden panel has been created on which the sink is actually met now let me just bring the sink up a little bit just a little bit yeah right about there and now it's time to apply the material for the sink so the same process for the sink as well i will be using an image texture use this as texture paint and have the desired result for the sink again i will be let me just cut it down i'll be selecting each and everything hit u to smart on uv project smart unwrapping everything and the image has been unwrapped sorry the uv has been unwrapped and now go to the texture paint same option for the for this one as well 
this thing will be sync so I'll be renaming as sync and for the texture I'll be using a new texture and this will be a sync texture and to the image texture I'll be using this one select this one uh, marble texture and you can see with the same stencil value I will be just drawing it value is always one let me just increase the something weird just happened yeah come on come on yeah, like that and now for here as well now that you can see that my image has been created this is the sync sync texture that i have created now that it has been made let me just quickly save it as an image save as an image as sync and use this texture for this material rename it as sync Now again the same node set up a mix shader for the interpolation between these two a glossy shader with 0 0.01 value of the glossiness and use the, use it as as a sink uh, what will be the factor the factor for this kind of ceramics will be a fresnel value where are you and the fresnel value should be uh, let me just again do this things okay what shall be the fresnel value of this uh, 3 maybe it's looking too much just get the hell out of here and let me see yeah like that So let me just uh, quickly look at my scene. Now you can, you can see that it's actually getting quite good. Now for this faucet, I'll be using simple material setup. Let me just use it as faucet, rename it as faucet. And um, I'll be using a very simple texture. It will be a glossy texture with uh, again 0 0.01 value of roughness and the same will be applied to the handle as well so materials unified material yeah like that and now for the mirror to be applied so what i'll be using i'll be using two different material the first material will be the mirror and the second material would be the wooden frame what the hell wooden frame these are the two material that I'll be using for the mirror I'll be using the same texture as a glossy texture with 100 per, with 0% roughness so it's 100% transparent or it's actually reflecting everything and uh, for the for the wooden part for the wooden frame part i'll be using two and a, a different texture for this one i'll be using 
let me just uh, let me just at first select a different color and let me assign and let me see how it's it looking and it's looking good now for the light i'll be using a cube for the top light I'm using a cube send it upward scale it down like that Then scale according to the x-axis right about there until it matches my scene send it forward select this face and send it forward even more select this face select beef to bevel it a little bit and then select this edge e to extrude send it back up to there and for this one also I'll be using two different material the first one will be the, the frame and the second one will be the light and for the frame a very basic material diffuse material will be enough for the sake of the tutorial and for the light I'll be going to the edit mode and select this little devil over here and just introduce an emission shader and use a black body and set the temperature to about 3000 and click on the sign and you can see that uh, that it is actually producing light and the strength shall be 200 and that's it we have created the light everything has been created let me just decrease the value to about 50 yeah 50 will be enough that will be too too much so this is the model and another thing is needed because I've forgotten the pipes so for the five pipes again I'll again go ahead and uh, add a plane select the plane to be right about there somewhere like there let me just uh, position that scale it down apply level 2 of of sub sub modifier and apply it and then go to the edit mode and just quickly there's extrude and then again extrude and then again extrusion and extrusion extrusion yeah Oops. yeah like that and uh, now it's time to add some loop cut so that we our mesh won't get deformed and now let me add level 2 sub sub modifier and let me see how is the model actually looking well it's looking satisfactory like that and uh, the material will be the same as well for this one uh, now let me see and yeah it's looking good good enough for this scene and now a very little bit of a tweaking is actually left oops select this one d to extrude 
just a little bit of extrusion with the need e to extrude scale up e to extrude scale down a little bit and here we go we have created our sync module and now for the render now one option is actually very very much helpful to me is add tri lighting now if you don't have this option over here try like test since lighting sets add try lighting now how to do it just select any any of the mesh i'll be selecting this mesh and then i'll be using add try lighting and you have the cameras actually implemented onto the scene as you wish to have your image as well as you want now let me just quickly demonstrate uh, let me just see how the thing is actually working on the on the darkness side so as you, i can see that i need to increase the lighting value a little bit that would be two maybe two and a little bit of a yellow light will be good enough for this scene yeah and for this one let me just bring it forward a little bit 150 and uh, this one a little bit of a blue lightings and for this one that will be 300 and it's looking rather nice yeah so that's it and now if you don't if you don't know how to activate this tri lighting sets it, which is very obviously very handful or very handy for any kind of uh, renderings you can always find it over there go to the user preferences go to the add-ons and search for extras and over there sorry extra add mesh extra object just select this one and save user settings and you will find it right about there so okay i hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, little bit of uh, a little tutorial about this sync model i hope you guys like it and uh, this time i will be I'll be trying my best to be as regular as possible so if you want to support me 